Sanctuary jurisdictions provide safe harbor for some of the most dangerous criminals in our country. That makes a sanctuary city really, in a way, it's fair to say it makes that city a trafficker, smuggler, or a predator's best friend. U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions in Miami, Florida today speaking out against sanctuary cities like Chicago that give safe harbor to criminal illegal aliens. Joining me now, the Daily Caller News Foundation's editor-in-chief, he is Chris Bedford. Good to see you, Chris. Good to see you. Jeff Sessions said sanctuary cities are a predator's best friend as well. What do you think of that? Jeff Sessions, so he, I, think he, I think he had a good message today. He, he chose Miami-Dade County for a reason. It's because Miami-Dade County had a horrible problem with violence in the 80s when it was a really big center for drug smuggling, and, and they cracked down. Right now, it's a city that's a, or a county that's about comparable in size, Chicago, doesn't have anywhere near the murder rate. And recently, despite being a Democratic county and one that's not necessarily friendly with the president, they've agreed that in exchange for federal funds, they would crack down and they would work with Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And it's really rich to see Rahm Emanuel over there in Chicago, a city that had nine murders this past weekend, 30 people wounded this past weekend, lecturing anyone on how to keep the population safe and how to keep people, Americans, uh, away from harm. Yes, Chicago's still on track to match last year's record of homicides and murders. I mean, the law enforcement of this country still have a lot to deal with in terms of crime. And we talk a lot about domestic terror, of course, given the events of the past weekend. Chris, there's a lot of debate about these GAO stats cited by the media that that since 9-11, 85 extremist attacks resulted in 225 deaths. Why not include the 9-11 attacks in those numbers, right? I mean, and also jihadists are still killing people around the world. I mean, the, the, the idea that it's domestic-based terrorism versus jihadis, and that's how the media is interpreting that, this, but really jihadis are outpacing all sorts of terror attacks, right? Yeah, and the first time I saw a statistic like this was about a year ago. The New York Times did this exhaustive study that said terror attacks in America since 9-11. I, I wanted to write an op-ed tearing it apart, but I could only get one paragraph, which is... If you, want to be, if you want to be real about this and you want to actually do a statistical study, then how could you possibly exclude the biggest single data point in all of domestic terror attacks in the United States, which is what they've done? It's, it's so see-through to say we must, you know, they must protect the narrative. The narrative is more important than the facts. So if you exclude the things that counter the narrative and you, you heap in all these other things that had nothing to do with conservatives or the right wing yeah. as right wing terror attacks, you completely ignore left wing terror attacks, then sure, you can, malle you can take reality like Plato and make it fit whatever crazy yeah, idea the, you, you want. You know, the way to piece is through the truth and the facts. Just report the facts. I mean, even if you include the Oklahoma City bombing in the 90s, it still would not meet what the jihadis did here in this country when you add in 9-11 and the, 90, uh, the early 90s bombing of the World Trade Center. You know, the toll also on the U.S. military and intelligence forces, uh, intelligence forces in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria. I mean, jihadis still claim more lives than any other terrorist movie. You look at what's going on in Europe. And also, we have to say this. If you're going to do it right, if you're going to report the facts, talk about the cop killings. Talk about the Dallas police officers and the two cops ambushed, for example, in, in Brooklyn in 20, uh, 2014, right? Talk about it all. Absolutely. And, and you notice in the GAO report that they don't even include left-wing attacks. They don't include things like, and no one right now is talking about how, how silent the White House was when, when Focus on the Family, excuse me, the socially conservative think tank in D.C. was shot up, a security guard wounded, attempted murder. People don't want to talk about that, and it's over and over and over again. You hear these things like, well, we must, and they must protect the narrative. You see the head of the FBI come out after the Chattanooga shooting when a, when a recruitment station was shot up and say, well, we may never know what happened here. It's so obvious what happened there, but they're willfully closing okay. their eyes and ignoring it. Chris